Good morning, everybody. Gwei. Gwei. Thank you all very much for joining us here for morning prayer. Uh, you can find a copy of the Book of Alternative Services in the description. There's a link, and we begin on page 47. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was As in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, now and, and will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. O come, let us worship. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. O come, let us worship. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to God's voice. We pray that your hearts and your minds and your ears would be open to the proclamation of God's word. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Second Samuel, chapter 7. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemies, the king summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of God is out there in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Go ahead and do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the Lord said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. Are you the one to build a house for me to live in? I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. I have always moved from one place to another with a tent and a tabernacle as my dwelling. Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israelites' tribal leaders, the shepherds of my people Israel. I have never asked them, why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar house? Now go and say to my servant David, This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on the earth, and I will provide a homeland for my people Israel planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they've done in the past, starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Furthermore, the Lord declares that he will make a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name, and I will secure his royal throne forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. If he sins, I will correct and discipline him with the rod like any father would do. This is the word of the Lord. Hey folks, our psalm this morning is Psalm 89 verses 20 through 37. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. He will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish in his line forever and his throne 
I will establish his line forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgressions with a rod and their iniquities with the lash. But I will not take my love from him, nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once... For all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast for evermore, like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people with, from the two groups. Together, as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now, all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now, you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the, and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, Sure, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, the people at once recognized them, and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hey folks, Gwei. Thank you for joining us today for morning prayer. Thank you for joining me for this reflection. Today, I'm preaching from the Gospel of St. Mark. In particular, I'm preaching from verses, uh, chapter 6, verses 54 through 56. Here's what it says. When they got out of the boat, 
people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard that he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who, tu who touched it were healed. Now I've given this talk other days, in other ways. I, I've used other stories to say this, to make this point. Our reputation in the community matters. Jesus gets out of a boat on some shore. And the people there, they know at once who he is. Now, they don't have social media. They don't have television, newspapers. They don't have anything like that. They know who he is based on the description that they've heard. They know who he is based on, on how he has impacted neighboring communities, how he has impacted communities on the other side of a fairly large body of water. His reputation has grown throughout the countryside. Jesus of Nazareth, he looks like this, he sounds like that, he wears these kinds of robes, he travels with fellas that look like this and sound like that. Jesus' reputation preceded him. There was no need for confirmation. There was no need to, is that Jesus? I don't know. That might be Jesus, but I'm not sure. Hey, Jesus, could you heal this cut in my hand? Oh, look at that. That must really be Jesus. Okay, go get all the sick. Bring everybody in. He can do it. No. They just knew who he was because of the work that he had already done. They knew who he was because of the message that he had already offered. They knew who he was because of how he has impacted the communities and the peoples that he's encountered. News of who he was spread quickly. And when he arrived, everybody came to him. They got everybody they possibly could. They put the sick on mats, it said, and brought them to him. They brought the people that needed to be healed. They brought the people that, were, that they thought were demon-possessed. They, 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 they came to him because they knew what he could provide. And so the question I have for our church, for our church being the universal church, is this. What is our reputation in our community? Is our reputation in our community one that tells people that when we are available, they can come forward, they can bring their sick, they can bring their dying, they can, they can bring their poor, they can bring their possessed, that we will be there for them, that we will heal, we will provide, we will love and, and nurture, that we will support and teach? Or is it something else? Here in Canada right now, churches of many stripes are taking a, they have a real bad public image. Left or right, doesn't matter. Orthodox, Protestant, it doesn't matter. Churches of all kinds of different stripes are taking a beating because of who they've been in the past, because of the story that they've offered the world, because of their reputation their history, their experience, because of the paths that they've traveled. In the U.S., it's not, it's not too terribly different. Actually, all around the world, it's not too terribly different. Churches don't really, for the most part, have a great reputation. Our loudest self-proclaimed ambassadors are the ones who Teach the world that the church isn't a place to go for safety and comfort and healing. Our loudest, our loudest self-proclaimed ambassadors often just have loud voices. And they can often say fairly hateful things that get picked up in the media and shared everywhere. It's quite the opposite of Jesus arriving on the shore. 
Jesus arrives on the shore. Everybody brings the sick. We arrive on the shore. Everybody runs away. Or, as we are see, beginning to see, they stand in protest. They don't want us there. Now, in the church, some will say things like, well, that's because they don't know what they, don't know what they actually need. If they actually knew what they needed, if they actually knew what they needed and they weren't buying into the lies of the world, they would come rushing to church in droves. They would, they, they would fill our churches to overflowing if they knew what they actually needed. But my experience, especially with this channel and, and with social media, is that most people out there actually have a pretty good indication. They have a pretty good idea of what they need. The problem isn't that they don't know what they need. The problem I've come to understand is that they don't actually know what the church offers. They don't know what the church is supposed to be about. They don't know what the church is supposed to do in the community. And that is probably for more than any other reason because maybe the church doesn't actually understand its place in the world. And if we don't understand our place in the world, there's no way that the public, those outside of the church, could have any possible idea of who we are really supposed to be. There is no way that we can have a positive image within our communities. There's no way we can have a reputation like Jesus had this reputation as Christians. Followers of Jesus Christ, we can look at how the world reacts to Jesus in this particular passage. When he shows up, they know exactly who he is and they go get the people that need him and they bring those people to him and they gather around him and they listen to him and they learn from him. They seek him. This was an indicator that Jesus was having an impact. This would have told Jesus that he was having a positive impact on these communities in his region, in his, in his society. It's still a good indicator for us, all of us, are the poor, the sick, the downtrodden, are the oppressed, are they seeking us? Who are we to them? Who are we to the people in our communities who live on the margins, the castaways? If they are coming to us, if they are going and gathering their friends and coming to us, then we're, we're on the right track. If not, then I think we have to reevaluate which track we're actually on. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that as church... We're developing a reputation, a positive reputation amongst those souls that are out there on the edges of our communities, on the margins of our communities. That our reputation is one, that we are a place of comfort and safety, a place of healing, a place of community, a place of inclusion and connection, a place of love. Amen. Numultus. Let us confess the faith of our baptisms together as we say, I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. dead. On, On the third, third day, day he rose, rose again. again, he ascended, he ascended into, into heaven, heaven and, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join with us in prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, for the earth which provides for our needs, for the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for our Christian family all around the world and here locally. And we ask for grace to grow in your love, no matter our differences. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for our YouTube family, the internet people all around the globe, for peace, perspective, and power to keep doing their good work in their communities. Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for the world, for our world, for all its cares and needs, and for all who lead us and care for us. Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for those in need, for the sick and the lonely, for the hurt and the frightened, for those whose lives feel without hope. Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for those who have died recently, that you will surround them with your care and love. Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. And we pray to you for one another, asking you to bless us, bless our friends and relatives, bless the places where we work and bless our home and our life together. Lord, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. And let us remember now before God our selfish ways, the things we have done wrong, the sorrows we have caused, the love we have not shown. Most merciful Father, Forgive us our sins against you and against each other. Strengthen us to overcome our weaknesses that we may live in love as you would have us live. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 This is a collect for um, a church who's going through a time of discernment. So as we prepare to, to leave Christ Church Shelburne, Let's keep them in our prayers. Let's keep this parish in our prayers. Almighty God, giver of all good gifts, look on this your church with grace and guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that they may receive a faithful servant who will care for all of your people and support these wonderful people in their ministries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our collect of the day, Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our prayer over the gifts for all that we have been given. And for what we are able to give in return. O God, accept our praise and thanksgiving. Help us in all we do to offer ourselves as a true and living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Our time of prayer for today has come to an end. Our time of service. It's ongoing.
God bless you in it. God encourage you in it. God mm -hmm. empower you and equip you in it. The world is a better place because of you. We'll see you again all very, very, very soon. Nemotis. 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 Stole my line. <laughs>